Hello, hello, everybody. On today's lesson plan, we're going to discuss how to track leads. And what I believe is so incredibly important is that we track so that we know what's working. Well, and honestly, so we know what's, what's not working as well. What happens is if we're not tracking, we tend to get caught up in um, making decisions based on emotion, what it looks like it's working. So let me give you an example. So you run some Facebook ads and, um, you know, you, you, the first one doesn't go so well and you do another one, you don't see a whole bunch come in. And then you do another one and you get it and you get an appointment, you're all excited and you're posting on Facebook that you got this lead from Facebook and everybody wants to know how you did it and what you did because all this stuff happens and then the lead doesn't even end up eventually closing. And, um, but your, your memory and your emotion and your feeling is that Facebook works, okay? Now I'm not saying it doesn't because it obviously does, there's a strategy behind it, but um, if you need to track so that you're clear and understand what's working and, and tracking for me completely changed the way I changed my focus on where I spent my efforts and energy because one of the things that I realized once I started tracking was that so much of my um, uh, closings come from, search, uh, from Google search engine optimization and agent referrals primarily where, where you'll see a large lead volume still come in off of some other channels those are primarily where my closings are coming from. And then when I dive a little deeper, I'm able to see that they're coming from blog posts and they're coming from homes for sale by feature IDX pages on my website. And so that tells me, okay, I need to get up and do more of this when I do my lead generation. So that's really where I want to focus our time today. Um, I also want to show you guys really quick, for those of you that are in, um, that have the Ballon Method system, if you log, go ahead and log in to Ballon Academy. I want to show you something. Not, don't do it right now. But if you click on the Ballon method to get into your lesson plans, I want to show you what, I, what I've been doing in here. It's really important. Right up here, I, I need to get my developer to make that like a bigger button, have it flash or have arrows or something. Um, these are your new lesson plans and updates. So I promised you guys with the Ballon method system that I would – um, keep it current as long as I was practicing um, the strategies, I would keep this alive and uh, therefore making it a lifetime product, which is exactly what I've done. And in, it, there's been some, uh, the principles don't really change, but some of the strategies do and some of the, some of the channels that we use do. And, you know, we might change our preference in IDX providers or whatever it happens to be. And so I go in here and customize so that you guys can see exactly what I do and how I do it. And then you can learn the concepts and then go implement it yourself, right? So I have updated so much in here just in the past six weeks. It's unbelievable. And I'm going to continue adding and updating. And, and I'm also, I've also been working on, on creating it um, a little bit easier to break down into little chunks. And, and um, I, I know some of you guys get overwhelmed because there's just so much. So I've been taking out some of the stuff that isn't necessary and adding more video and adding more little toggles. So, for example, if you click here, new lesson plans and updates, all of these have been updated or are new lessons. So right next to this, new lesson, new lesson, new lesson, new lesson, new lesson, new lesson, new lesson. New lesson. You're going to see a lot of that since I'm focusing on um, on the system again. Since I'm not traveling so much right now on purpose, I, I just kind of want to be close to home right now. I, I have more time, and, and I'm able to put more time into the system right now, building onto it. So that's where my focus is. I figured I've got the time. Why not go in there and make it all shiny and new? And so what you'll notice is when you click on um, when you click on one of the lesson plans, you're going to see, let's see, which one did I? Some of them will just be a simple video, and others will be very, very complex. This is my favorite. Is um, I need to go and add the toggles, though, is the game plan, because this actually now tells you what it is you need to do. 
uh, I think it was Reagan that asked me if I would go in and out and put in links to each of those lesson plans. So I will do that for you as well. But anyway, um, I have been really, really, really focused on this. This is, this is the idea here. So a video and then each of these little toggles you're able to open and it's got a bite sized piece about that specific element. And then there's another one about that, another one about that, another one about that. So, um, make sure you guys are getting back in there, okay? And I'm um, checking all this out because I'm doing a lot of work in there for you guys. And I want to see you be extra, extra successful. So this reminds me today that I'll go in there this week and look at what we have for lead tracking, um, a lesson plan on lead tracking and see where we are with all of that kind of stuff, okay? All righty. So make sure you guys keep asking your questions. I appreciate your questions, and it helps me to continue to grow the system. All right, so lead tracking. Um, there isn't a whole lot to this as far as the steps, but there's a whole lot to the content and the value of what you get out of the steps, okay? So um, I'm going to try to keep this simple for you to begin with, and then I'd like to see you take this more advanced as you get more advanced. So for example, when I started tracking leads at first, I was using a spreadsheet, which is what I'm going to show you how to do right now. And then as I got more, um, as I needed more data and I wanted it to be more complete, I added Infusionsoft into our, um, our, into our software line. And Infusionsoft is a, is a super geeky CRM system. And then I, with that, I was able to, to better track and store the information for my lead data. And then we, we got a reporting system that, that would give it all to me in graphs and charts. And it took us, it took us a year to really implement it. And then now we're implementing uh, more of the automation pieces. Um, so we still have a virtual assistant that fills in some of the blanks. And hopefully by the end of this year, that, that will no longer be needed. It will all be automated. And we're going to be building that into our future um, real estate websites as well. But so what we ha what we did is the first thing I did is I just took I just went with a Google spreadsheet. Okay, so you can see here I have all of these trackings, all of these um, sheets here that I use for uh, for tracking and, and data. And all you have to do is do, I'll just go up here and let's go to a new sheet. So I'm going to go to Google Sheets. And these are free. And here's a blank worksheet, okay? Now, I'm going to show you how to, how, to, how to get the source of some of these web leads in a second. But first, let me show you how to, where to put them and what to do with them, okay? So some of you guys are getting leads from Facebook, and you know they're from Facebook. You're getting leads from listings to leads, and you know they're from listings to leads. Uh, you're getting leads from through your market leader account or your Boomtown account or whatever you have, and it's telling you where the lead came from. That's great. Now you need to know where to put it. Okay, and so what you'll do first here is put the name of the lead. These are going to be like your column headers, okay? And it's okay to move these around. This isn't a, a perfected, uh, I think I have a lead sheet in the balance method. I need to go look at my original one. But So you put their name, and then you're going to put, um, you might put the date of when the lead came in, and you're going to put the source uh, the, of where the lead came in. Then I would start a second sheet. So all I do is I take this little plus line and I add a second sheet. Okay, and so the first sheet I'm going to rename, and this is going to be called leads, and the second one is going to be called sources. Okay, so the first thing is I got a lead, so I'm going to put Mike Smith, and the date is May 1st, and the source is Google pay per click. And then I have Sam Jones. May 5th, and the source is Google Organic, okay? Now, what we're going to do over here under sources is you're going to list out where all your leads come from. Google Organic, Google Pay-Per-Click, Active Rain, Facebook Ads, Facebook Group or Business Page. Maybe you have something else there that you're doing. Um, maybe you're using listings to leads, landing pages, and and so you've got that there. Now, listings to leads really isn't a source. It's more of a vehicle or a channel. 
Um, but if you can't track any other way and you know you're getting leads from listings leads, you, but you can't tell where they're coming from behind that, you might have to put that as a source until you can track a little more in depth. Okay, and then you might have um, um, Twitter and Pinterest and Craigslist and, you know, you're paying for market leader ads or something. Okay, so you kind of got the idea there, right? Okay. If you're studying the Balan method, this should be your primary. <laughs> that first one. Google organic. Oh gosh, I forgot agent referrals, which is a huge part of my business too. So agent referrals, maybe we have sphere of influence. Okay. Anyway, that should be a big, big, a big section there. And so here's what you do. And you, you know what? You can actually just put those um, put those in a um, in a in a column instead of in a row probably makes more sense on this side. I'll show you why in a second. So we're going to put those in a column instead, okay? All right. So then here, there's ways that you can calculate, you can get these um, spreadsheets to calculate for you automatically and do some tallies. But for right now, what I want to show you is here, you got, you got a lead from Mike Smith. It's a Google pay-per-click. Go over to your sources, and next to Google Pay Per Click, just put a little one. Okay? And then over here, you got a Google Organic, Sam Jones, just put a little one. Oh, you know, that's what I'm forgetting. Okay. This is what happens when I do it on the fly and haven't done this in a while. Put your um, dates up here January 2017, February 2017. Okay. So then you know what, what months you got them in. So you can do some totals like that. Okay. And so now you get another lead, it's another Google organic, then just change this to a two, okay? So you're going to get this running total. So by the end of the year, you're going to know how many leads you got from each source. Okay, so far, isn't this pretty simple? Yet, isn't this super effective for those of you that aren't doing this yet? The next step is going to be to add your closings, okay? So over here, back at your leads... You could put, um, uh, let's just put closed commission. You're going to track your closed commissions. You could track the, the, the house, uh, the price of the house or the closed commission or both, whatever you want to track here. But the most important thing is that you're tracking the commission because that's actually the money you're receiving, and that's how you figure out your rate of, uh, your ROI, your, your return, right? So, um Mike Smith, closed commission, let's just say you know that you closed this house and it was a $5,000 commission, okay? So then what will happen is you could start another one over here, sheet three, and call this one closings. And then you'll put each one of those sources again, just like you did in, in, uh, over here. Same thing, January, February, March. Now you'll just put in a commission dollar amount, 3000 and then you close to 5000 so now you have an $8,000 commission there. Okay? You guys with me? Okay. All right. My cat is climbing all over me. All right. So now when we come back here... Um, this is basically your tracking sheet. Super effective, super simple. Super effective, super simple. The, the key is you just have to have the discipline to do this. Okay? Now, you can also go far, one step farther and start another one. This is how advanced I, I started getting before I figured out how to automate it. And on sheet four, I would rename this and call it content. Now here, I'm going to list what the page was that the lead, that the lead became a, a lead on. So the lead came in on um, how much does it cost to sell a house in Las Vegas, right? That's the blog title. And then here, I might put the lead count, and here I might put the commissions earned. So my total lead for that was one, and my commission earned was whatever, you know? And so as, as deep as you want to go with this, and you could track that here, closed commission, what content did they come in on? And then total it the same way. Um, cost to close a house. 
okay? So now you're tracking your source and you're tracking your what what is what was the item that got them? What was the content? Was it you know what Facebook ad was it? What blog post was it? You know what pay per click ad was it that got them in? Now you're going to start really opening up, going, oh, I had no idea that's what was working. All right, so let's let's look at a couple ways to find out where your leads are coming from. First thing is you got to have clicky. Okay, you got to have clicky so that you can track IP addresses or you can track um, by looking at the time of, of a lead when it came in. Okay, this can be really hard to do with Google Analytics um, basic setup. And so clicky makes this so much easier. And so what we do is once you've installed clicky on your website, you're going to be able to start storing content. So even if you don't know what to do with it yet, get it on there so that you, you can um, begin storing this data. And um, it, all you have to do is click, once you set up your website, Clicky gives you a code and you put your code on a page on your website where it shows up at, on every page. So you put it in the header or the footer, or if you're using WordPress, there's a Clicky plugin, you can just put it right there. So super simple, but it has to show up on every page. No, this doesn't work so great on, on the market leader websites from my experience. Um, I don't know about Placer and them where if they've if they've got these codes now that are allow. I know they have Google Analytics, but last I had checked, they didn't have the ability to add add the clicky site. But that could could have changed. I don't know at this point. Um, that's why we prefer that you have your own WordPress that you own and no limitations, so that you can can do all this stuff with it. And this will work on a non WordPress site too. So if you're using one of the other uh, website providers, just message the webmaster and say, "Hey, I've got this code. Can you put it on my website so it shows up on every page?" Okay. So here's what we do. Let's just say we got a lead. Let me log in here. We're going to log in to IDX Broker. And um, let's just say we got a lead, and we're just going to go look at this lead. I'm trying not to show their contact information. Okay, pull, pull. Here is the IP address. So the IP address is a unique um, address uh, through this, that somebody has through their website provider. And so unless they registered in a public place like a Starbucks that has a, a, a public IP on a on their computers or something. Um, it, It'll be unique. Most of the time, it's a unique, um, a unique IP address. So they'll have one on their cell phone, and they'll have one on their on their computer. And um, generally, when you see these, they'll be unique to that person. So what you do is you take you copy the IP address. Come back. There we go. You go over to Clicky, and right up here, you go over to Visitors. Add a filter. IP address and paste it in to the IP address. I mean, paste it into the filter. This is why Clicky remains probably the, my favorite thing I've ever implemented in my entire career because it changed everything for me when I was able to track where leads were coming from. It changed everything. It changed how I thought about content and blogs and IDX and that's what compelled me to get a better IDX and and write better blogs and 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 oh I just have learned so much from from testing and measuring using this tool so what we're able to see is that this lead came is in Temecula California and they are using a Microsoft platform Windows 10 and they came from google.com and this is an organic lead. So this is a non-paid lead, okay? Now, if I click on this 32 actions, I'm able to see that this person was on my website for nearly 19 minutes, and they took 32 actions. Guys, this is a hot, hot, hot lead, okay? I, this is one to go right after because the person is very serious about something to have spent this amount, this amount of time on my website, okay? And then they registered. So I can see everything they did on the website, and then I can see here that they came from my solar panels page. Okay, this, this I couldn't have picked a better example for you guys today because that is just awesome. So let me show you what this website look, what that page is. Don't know why that blog post takes so long to open in this browser because it's it loads in less than three seconds. 
just my Google Chrome. All right, so Las Vegas homes with solar panels. What are we looking at here? We're looking at a page of Las Vegas homes with sol solar panels. No words on the page. No content on the page. And I'm ranking for this. Now let's see how, let's see something really quick. Let's look at our SEM rush. And let me look and see. Let me go to Val in Vegas. And let's go down to all the keywords I rank for. 14,631 ranking keywords in the top 100 spots of Google. How about that? <laughs> and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to type in solar panel. And we're going to look and see what I rank for. Check this out. I don't know why. I don't know why I can't. Um, why they're all merged in there so tiny. Darn it. Let me see if I can shrink that down. Oh, that's why I had my screen magnified. Okay, so look, I rank for solar panels, Las Vegas, Las Vegas solar panels, solar panels for home for sale, solar panels outside Las Vegas, homes with solar panels, panels for sale, homes for sale with solar panels. Okay, you see that? Here is, this is probably the big one. I'm ranking number 14 for solar panel homes for sale. Okay. Now, would you have ever even thought of that? Let me go create a page about solar panels. I wouldn't have. The only reason I did was because I learned through tracking that people search very specifically for homes for sale with particular features. And so I built out a page for every single feature my MLS offers. Yeah, it is fascinating. I agree. I, 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 I'm reading your guys' comments. It's, it's, it is. It, and, and it was only because I started tracking that I was able to, to gather this knowledge and build on from there. Um, okay, so again, uh, Mike says, how, how did you find that that lead came from Google Organic? It says it right here. If it were pay-per-click, it would have a little dollar sign next to it. Okay, and I'm not gonna get into this today, but there's other ways that you can track um, URLs specifically through like um, Bitly and through Google Shortener and whatnot. Um, but your solar panels page has no actual content about solar pages. Correct. The entire power of that page is coming from the title tag. From the title of that page, which is Las Vegas Homes for Sale with Solar Panels. That's where all of the Google juice is coming from. Can you believe that? Now, be careful. Because that's not always going to be the case, and you know that I love creating content, and I'm a big believer in content, but this particular page doesn't need it. It doesn't need it. Now, if I'm competing against somebody about, so I want to rank number one for solar panels, period, not just homes for sale, but I want to rank number one in Google for solar panels in Las Vegas because I want to drive them to this page. Now I'm going to go create a whole page of content all about solar panels and solar panel companies and what are the best solar panels and how much money do you save with solar panels. But for this purpose, I don't need to do that. Okay, not, especially not when I'm just launching all those pages. But there might come a point when I come back later and say, okay, now I'm only, I'm only getting to number 17. Oh, I'm already at 14. I'm only getting to, to number eight. And I really want to push this up to, number, to the top three. Now I'm going to start creating content. If I need to, if I need to. But yes, all of these pages have solar panels. All of these properties have solar panels. Yes. I built that out on the IDX widget. I went in and did a search, homes for sale in Las Vegas, and I checked a little box with solar panels. So yes, all of these properties have solar panels. So it accomplishes exactly what the, um, what the user wants, visitor wants. I mean, you can see them. Look right there. You can see the solar panels on, on, the, on the roof, okay? Um, yeah, so, um, okay, so now let's look at it. Let's look at, let's just say you don't have the IP address. Okay, you don't have the IP address. But I could see, let's do another one. I can see that this lead, Carrie, came in May 9th at 9.30. So that's today. This is perfect. May 9th at, at not May 9th at, what time did I say? Um, 9.30. So I'm going to go over to my Click account. Now watch this. We're going to go back over to Visitors. And we're going to scroll down to 9.30. I actually think you can pull 9.30 on the filters, but we're not too far away, so we'll just do this. 
Okay, so we're going to get down to about the 930 mark, and we're going to look for, let's see, where did, what did it say? Um, let me open that lead and see if there's any hints there. Okay, she was looking at Panorama Towers. I can see in my description there she was looking at the subdivision for high rise. It looks like Panorama Tower. So let's see. Uh, last page, May 9th, 928. May 9th, 934. Okay. See, this is more work, but we're going to look. Um, so that could be her. Snakes in Las Vegas is probably not. Oh, look, we found her. Check it out. How do I know? Because I saw Panorama Towers, and I saw Panorama Towers in her link right here. Now, if you don't have a lot of leads and a lot of traffic, it might be really obvious to you. You'll go, oh, there was only one between 930 and 945, so that was that person. And um, and that's one way to do it. But see, this is a pay-per-click. And this is Google.com Canada. So the person's in Canada. And my ad, the keyword phrase that they paid for on my Google AdWords is Panorama Towers. And so I even could go one step further right now, and I do, by the way, just so that you know. I could go over to Google Pay Per Click now and look at how much I paid for that click. And I make a note in my Infusionsoft that it was a buck seventy-two. So that lead cost me a dollar seventy-two. Now technically it didn't really, because if I'm going to figure out correct cost per lead, I'm going to look at all of my leads that came in from Panorama Towers. And I'm going to look at all the money I spent on my ads for Panorama Towers, including the ones that didn't register. And then I'm going to divide how much I spent divided by how many leads I got to figure my cost per lead. But th but my cost for, for, for the click on this was buck seventy two. It was less than that, by the way. But in Vegas, it's I get by with some cheap, cheap pay-per-click, <laughs> fortunately. Okay? And then you can see the one underneath that, Las Vegas Homes with a Pool. Look at this. The one underneath that, Facebook. Okay? Now, if that were a Facebook, oh, this is great. So this person here, now these aren't necessarily leads, these are traffic. This, these are people that were on my website. It doesn't mean they registered because I'm, I'm looking at a different side now. But this is all the visitors that are on here. Okay. So today I did a blog post about the Airstream Park in Las Vegas. And Air, the Airstream Park um, here is, was, built, was um, designed by, the, uh, by Tony, the creator of Zappos. And um, it's all tiny living. So they're like 200 square foot, tra under 200 square foot trailers and these tiny little, a few tiny little um, tumblewood houses. And, um, and you can see here that I, they clicked through from Facebook. So if they had become a lead and I would have seen that in my IDX, then I would have been able to come here and see this. So what the, the key to all of this working is that you have to have all these little systems set up. So your first system has to be the tracking device. And Clicky will take care of that for you. It'll at least show you who was on your website when, even if you don't have the IP addresses. Because if you're using an IDX provider um, or a landing page provider or something that does not release the IP address to you, you won't be able to track by IP address. And that's one of the reasons why I love um, IDX Broker is because it releases the IP address. Um, and WolfNet does too. We actually got them to build that in. and then. Um, uh, and I, th I, bl I believe that's who powers Playster still, isn't it? And then, um, no, we were not getting the IP addresses from Playster. They weren't they might power, but they weren't releasing the IP addresses. Um, and listings to leads also, if you're using listings to leads landing pages and home valuation pages, it also releases the IP address. So I'm able to go in and track where those home valuation leads are coming from, which is incredibly, incredibly powerful, okay? And so you could, just, you could just sit here until you're – I used to do this when I was first starting off on this. I, I would – you can – there's sound effects on Clicky. So when the new visitor lands on your website, it, you could make a sound like knocking on your door or, or air missiles, which, by the way, scared, scared me to death sometimes because I feel like, oh, my gosh, I'm being shot, and I forget it's Clicky. Or somebody's at the door. No, it's just Clicky. So you got to be careful with those sound effects. Um, and but while I was building traffic, I would get so excited. I would hear the I would hear the sound effect on clicking, and I'd run over to the computer and I'd look and I'd watch them. I'd watch this person. Oh, okay, here's where they are. Now they go to this page. Now they go to this page. But then they left on that page. So like this one here, they 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 came from Google. They landed on. Oh, they might still be on there. 
They landed on um, buying a home. How long does it take to close on a house? Yeah, they, they, it's possible they're still on there. Or Oh, no, they were only on there for a minute, looks like. Okay, so they probably did not find what they wanted on there. Whatever they were Googling, that wasn't probably wasn't what they were looking for. So I probably wouldn't focus on that one too much. You're going to get a bunch of those. Um, and then I would go down and look at the next one and go, okay, now what did this one go to? What property did they look at next? And you learn from, from monitoring this, okay? And then just make sure that you get these leads on your tracking sheets. Get the leads on the tracking sheet. So this is the simplest way I know how to show you um, to begin tracking your leads. And obviously, if it's a phone call, ask them how did they hear about you so that you can go in here and log this in. And um, be careful about guessing. Because if you guess and you're wrong, you're now crediting a particular source. So I, you might want to have an um, undefined field for your guesses that you put those, put those in. But otherwise, ask them, how did you hear about us? Oh, I was Googling you. Oh, what were you looking for? What did you Google? And they'll oftentimes tell you that keyword, okay? Um, if it's an open house, put it, it was an open house. But get your leads on this tracking sheet and start recording. All right. Thanks so much for joining me today, you guys. Um, I appreciate your time and log back into the Balan Method and check out all of those new lesson plans that I have added for you. And I will talk to you guys all next week.